Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Xingyu. Um, my today's topic is bridging the cities and the village through education 2.0. And first, let me do an introduction. Yeah. Uh, as you can see that the first picture about five uh, yeah, the first picture about five years ago. At that time, I was a college student, a major in international relations. I got my bachelor degree in Fudan University and my own, uh, master in NYU. The second picture is about four years ago. At that time, I was active in over 20 TV shows. I won a talent show called Who is Still Standing in 2016. Uh, and won 100,000 yuan cash for the price, 100,000 followers on Weibo, and published my first book. Uh, the last picture is about two years ago, and it's my daily look nowadays. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Beyond the City, uh, a social enterprise aimed to bridge the cities and the village through education. Uh, what we are doing is like kind of human trafficking. Yeah, we took city teens to rural areas of China for a few trips. And uh, at the same time, we sponsored the rural kids to explore the city life and set their career goals. Yeah, till now we have brought about 3,000 city teams to the village and sponsored 300 and two rural kids to come to Shanghai and Chengdu. And today I'd like to share with you my story about why I started to do this uh, human trafficking job and how uh, I'm doing this. Originally, I'm not a, a student major in any agricultural related topics. I major in international relations. But when I was majoring in international relations, I found a very interesting phenomenon in China that uh, everything, if it was added a title of the international, it becomes more expensive. Like the tuition of kindergarten is cheap, but the tuition of international kindergarten is very expensive. So in my college years, uh, in order to let myself to become more expensive, I travel a lot. I did my uh, exchange in Helsinki, Finland for half a year, and then I did my master in NYU. Uh, I even spent a month to go to the North Korea. Uh, I published a paper about China DPRK relations after I come back uh, from DPRK. But uh, still, I find I cannot answer the second most often questions my, from my foreign friends. Uh, that is, what is China like? Or what is it like to, like to live in China? Uh, because every time when I was asked this question, I can only come up, come up with the first tier cities like Shanghai and Beijing and the tourist destinations my parents once took me to and my hometown in the countryside of Shanghai. I knew those cannot represent the whole picture of China, but I have no idea what is China uh, really look like. Uh, and every time uh, and every time when I talk about this, I'm very happy to introduce my hometown, Datuai, uh, Nanhui County. Uh, it's a place on the outskirts of Shanghai, which is an hour's ride away from Pudong Airport. Uh, it is where watermelons and juicy peaches grow. For the first 20 years of my life, one thing I have been continuously telling everyone around was, I'm a county, I'm a country folk of Shanghai. Unfortunately, uh, nobody was buying. They argued that there is no countryside in Shanghai at all. Uh, I'm not convinced. I grew up playing in the greenhouse. At the age of three, I once had a one-on-one -on -one compact with a big rooster. Uh, even though then it packed me here uh, and I lost the battle immediately and cried. I thought it is never too late for gentlemen to take the revenge. So later that night, with the help of my grandparents, I met it. Uh, I met that, that rooster in my chicken soup on my dinner table. So I think I must be a country folk. But uh, until I read this book, I find maybe uh, the, 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 the countryside of Shanghai is not so typical uh, compared to the village in China. Uh, th this book is written by Professor Sun Li Ping. Uh, it, it's called Cleavage. Chinese society since 1990s. It addressed an interesting argument that the urban and the rural differences between China and the United States is very different. It reveals that in the US, no matter you live in the New York doing investment banking or in California running a farm, although you have different lifestyles, different mindsets, uh, you are able to reach out to the similar goods or products, which means uh, all of them can find a coastal nearby.
However, in China, there's a huge gap between the people's life uh, in the eastern coastal area of China and the western rural areas of China. Uh, to figure out whether I'm a true country folk, I have joined several service projects like a volunteer teaching project uh, called uh, Teach for China and a poverty relieving project called Serve for China uh, during my college time. And uh, during my service, I find, uh, yeah, the, the countries of Shanghai is no typical type, is not typical type compared to the West, the Western uh, village in China. Uh, for example, in Liangshan district, uh, Daliangshan, Sichuan province, I found that in the class of grade two, you can find students from uh, six year old to 16 year old, because many of the local people don't think it is necessary for kids to go to school until one day they become migrant workers and were asked to write their own names. And you can see this is a very beautiful village called Liangden uh, in Xiangxi district, Hunan province. Uh, it, is starting the, it is the starting point of my public service. You can see it has a wonderful view, but it's also a place under the deepest poverty for the villagers, they can hardly sell anything uh, outside due to the terrible traffic conditions there. Many of my service destinations are among the poorest counties in my country. Uh, some of them are out of tap water, some of them are out of electricity, some of them are out of maybe Wi-Fi signals. And if you live there, you will find you sleep next to the toilet and the toilet is always next to the Pig's tea. So if you sleep there, you can hear uh, like um, this noise all night. Uh, but also, I find I can help myself to every dinner table with a pair of chopsticks. All the local people, all the villagers will warmly welcome you with their best food and their best smile on the face. Suddenly, I decided to spend more time to stay in the village and explore the other side of China because uh, there lies the horizon and the division we lack in our growth. And here we can learn a sense of empathy, uh, which is crucial to orchids, grow, uh, orchids growth. So I called two of my best friends and persuaded them to quit their jobs. And we together found a social enterprise called Beyond the City and went back to the village. But at the beginning, I didn't do this kind of the human trafficking job. I went to the rural areas to help them to make money by selling agricultural products uh, outside. Uh, so I um, spent much time to study how these cute pigs, uh, piggies, become these cute, maybe smoked pork uh, and trying to sell uh, them out through e-commerce. Um, but but the more I sold, the more difficult it was for me to sell them. Uh, and gradually I feel I was not just selling the food, uh, but also uh, I'm selling the stories and feelings. And to make matters worse, I found that the fellow villagers, they don't seem to pay much attention to selling things. They were not very moved by our uh, action of this kind of the poverty alleviation. And they really thanked us for our help. I was very puzzled about uh, why they don't thank us for our help uh, until one day a teacher in Shanxi told me that she did not like the term poverty relief uh, because she thought it would make people feel hopeless. As more and more people were coming to help the poor, a strange idea occurred among many local children. They began to wonder if their hometown was so awfully rotten and they thought they must go out somewhere better and would never come back again. Uh, she said many villages were thus empty and nobody went, wanted to stay there because of the poverty uh, relief brought up uh, by those young people. Uh, that was when I suddenly realized that there was no problem with the aim of the poverty relief, but the way I dealt with it was wrong. I doubt uh, was I a little bit self-richness? Um, would it 
be that we always consider ourselves as a better than the villagers and the givers, that we ignore the feelings of the fuller villagers. Uh, would it be um, that we are holding our very privilege yet still trying to address the inequality? So we decided to go to the villages still, but no poverty lifting, uh, uh, no poverty relieving, no volunteering teaching, or no house building stuff. We just go there to learn. Uh, so we set up our first program called Field Study Trip. Yeah, we have two special points in our program. One is homestay. We, uh, all of our students and all of, all of the teens stay in the uh, house of the village. Uh, the second point is academics. We don't do like the uh, self learning program or we don't do uh, like the poverty lifting uh, stuff, but we go there to learn, to do some academic uh, exploration there. And well, I'm always using the word uh, equity, empathy, or stress that we have to do all this with an equal heart. Maybe some of you will think uh, it is unnecessary to be so sensitive about this. Or uh, why would the local people care about the equality? Why? Have you thought about this? Uh, because everybody care about equality. Uh, how, many have, how many of you have heard an experiment called Final Notice? It's a well-known experiment in behavioral economics. Uh, it's an experiment like this. I want people uh, to set up the rules to split the resources, uh, like beans or like go uh, goats. Uh, and the other people decide whether to accept the first one's rule. Or if the second people accept the first one's rule, then they split the resources as the first one said, if the second one, uh, the second person refused to accept the, the first one's rule, then nobody uh, will get anything. Yeah. Uh, then here's the situation. If uh, there's uh, 100, uh, 100 goats, uh, 100 goats, and uh, was and the goat was split from uh, between me, uh, you, and, you and I. And I split to myself 99% of the goat and to you 1%. How many of you will accept this rule? I guess um, very few of you will accept this rule. Yeah. And this experiment has been um, tested for many, many times for. Uh, uh, for tens of years uh, and across the gender, across the uh, nationality, I, even they uh, do this uh, experiments in the Kampong Ds and, and very few Kampong Ds will accept this. Why? And I think maybe it's, it is because that uh, the freedom or, or uh, the, 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 the chasing for the freedom is uh, a human nature uh, for all human beings and also a, a, a chase for the equality is also a human nature for all our human beings. And this reminds me of my exper experience in uh, Da Ba's village a year ago. You can see this village is extremely beautiful uh, with uh, breathtaking uh, sceneries. And uh, the first time I go there, I've met two uh, elderly people from the cities to go there for travel and two young local girl uh, of minority of E who was very enthusiastic to guide them. But what the two elderly said was embarrassing to think about even till now. Uh, what they said, they said to the little girl with a look of disgust, oh God, why do you, your clothes look so dirty? And don't you have other clothes to change? Do you wash them more? It will definitely look better after washing. If you don't have any clothes to change, and just feel free to tell us and we'll send them to you. I was thinking at that time, in fact, there are many people in the cities like this elderly uh, that are willing to devote their time and the money to helping the villages. 
but it is the case for some fellow villages when you have donated that money, but you are still making comments that hurt their feelings, they would rather not accept your donation. And so what's the problem here? I think it's the problem considering the mind distance and the physical distance. Today, there are 60% 60 60 of Chinese people live in the cities. Um, so uh, the physical distance between the cities and the rural areas in China is very close. But uh, at the same time, the mind distance or the soul distance between the cities and the rural areas is still very far away. It, it, and is it, there's a, still a huge gap between the soul distance. Um, uh, as you can see in the metros in big cities, people can still easily tell who is from the cities and who is from the country. And uh, there seems an uh, invisible wall between them. So uh, today I'd like to share with you what we are doing and uh, try to persuade you that maybe uh, we can spend more time to explore the views in China or, or around the world and do some like the uh, public service uh, at, the, at, the, at the same time, but don't occupy a commanding position, but to use an equal heart. Yeah, and this is my story of bridging the citizen with education and with an equal heart.